Hi, I'm Christina and this is a book review of The Book of the Unnamed Midwife by Meg Ellison. So this is a post-apocalyptic novel, it was published in 2014 and it's the first book in a trilogy. Now I have to say I absolutely love this book, it's a definite five star read for me and this is one of the best post-apocalyptic novels I have ever read, so that is high praise indeed. So at the start of the book, we meet a group of boys who are scribes in a classroom setting and they are transcribing the journal of the unnamed midwife. And then us as the reader start to read this journal along with them. And it starts with volume one, the book of the dying. And we are introduced to this character who is the unnamed midwife. Now throughout the book, she uses lots of different pseudonyms but we never actually find out her true name or her true identity. So just to tell you some of the identity she uses, she is known as Karen, Andrew, Carl, Alex, Dusty and Jane and we never really know too much about her as a person but she is definitely our main character but we do see how strong she is as a person and we see her ordeals throughout the whole of this story and some of the story is told through these journal entries and some of the story is told in third person. Now this is a very dark book, I think it's very bleak at times, there's definitely a lot of things in here that could be considered trigger warnings, so yeah I think this is definitely one of the most bleak post-apocalyptic novels that I personally have ever read, but I also think it could be genuinely what would happen in this situation. So although it is bleak, I do think it's a very realistic portrayal of what could happen in this situation. So just to give you a little bit of background about this particular post-apocalyptic situation, we have had a virus uh, ravage the whole world, we think. It starts in America and this book is initially set in San Francisco and our main character is a midwife so she's basically on the front lines in the beginning because she's working in the hospital as the virus first kind of makes itself known. So the mortality rate for this virus is extremely high. It is thought to be 98% in men and over 99% in women and children. So our main character, the midwife, is there at the very beginning as she is obviously delivering babies in hospital and it seems to be hitting women and children a lot harder than men. Obviously, there's lots and lots of men dying as well, but as she is working in the maternity ward, we do kind of see the focus on the women and the children in the beginning. And most of the women who give birth, give birth to stillborn children, or if they do give birth to a baby, the baby generally dies within the next few hours. And the mother herself, seems to die as well. And then in the general population, it seems as though the majority of women and children are dying. And then the majority of men are dying too, but like a fraction, like a percent more. So in the kind of main world later on, when we see the midwife who goes by all of those names, um, there's probably about 15 to 20 men for every single woman, I would say. And I don't think there are any children at all in this world anymore. So we see our midwife as she basically travels across America. She travels a huge, huge distance. And we see the different characters that she meets along the way. So she meets a woman in the beginning. She meets a couple of women. And her kind of mission, her purpose is to help save these women that she meets. So obviously she has medical training. She is a professional midwife so she knows a lot about women's health as well so the women that she meets she is trying to give them um, the contraceptive pills she's trying to give them different choices and trying to just help them um, just with their physical health so she meets one woman and she's you know trying to give her some food and she's trying to give her the contraceptive pill and she's just trying to give her anything that will hopefully help her life because it seems as though in this universe, every time a woman falls pregnant, she will die in childbirth and the baby will also die. So she's trying to prevent that and give these women more options and just an opportunity to live in this world. And I think it's very interesting to see 
the way in which she shows the characters in here so I think a lot of the time like I said previously it's very very bleak a lot of the men are not nice men in this most of them seem to be murderers rapists but there are some out there who seem to be you know more like nicer men that she meets but it's interesting how she kind of phrases them all so there's certain women here who are basically just property at this stage so they're kept in change they're kept tied up and they are traded for other goods and services so sometimes women would be traded for alcohol or cigarettes or food or guns those kind of things and then sometimes um they're kind of like the women are shared between the men as well for in return for like trades and services again and then there's also women there who we don't see as much of but they've kind of taken this almost as a business model you could say and it's referred to as a hive so you have a woman with maybe 10 20 men who all live together and it's kind of an arrangement that I guess like the hive, like a bee, she is the queen and these are her worker bees and they provide the food and everything else and keep her safe. Um, so yeah, interesting way of looking at it. I think I've read quite a lot of post-apocalyptic novels. I actually read, how many did I read last year? I think I read four or five and I read some really, really good ones actually. And like I say, this was one of the best. And I also read The End of Men. And that was excellent too. That was told from lots of different perspectives, lots of different women. And I also read Salt Lick, which was more of a climate um, kind of focused one. So obviously this one's a virus focused one and The End of Men was virus focused. And then Salt Lick was um, like a climate focused one. And then the other one I read that was also climate focused was The High House. And I adored that one. That was one of the best books I read in 2022 and then the other one was called The Pharmacist and I enjoyed that one not as quite as much as the others but I think that was kind of an unknown one I think maybe a nuclear focused one um so yeah I thought it was really well done um I thought it was just really well written actually it did feel um like this could genuinely happen as bleak as it was and as dark as it was in times and I'm very much looking forward to reading the other two books in this series I thought it was absolutely excellent I think it was really 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 good so there are lots of themes explored in this book one of the big ones is survival and just seeing how far our main character is going to go to survive in this world and we see her courage her resilience her adaptability and she really is an incredibly strong character in this story but she's also a very flawed character she makes bad decisions and she does things that morally aren't okay obviously to survive in this world and she's also just very human and she's yeah she's a very flawed main character I would say she's quite unlikable at times I don't think you're necessarily meant to like her as a main character but yeah you, you often you definitely definitely know that she's such a strong character probably one of the strongest female characters I've read in literature for a very very long time and I think that she could be possibly one of the last midwives left alive in America um I don't know that for sure but there are so few women there's so few people in general that it's very likely that she is possibly the last midwife now we know from the very beginning of the book obviously her journal is being transcribed by this group of boys in this room and a certain amount of time has passed so we know that her kind of life and her legacy of this journal is obviously incredibly important to their kind of culture and their community um, I'm guessing she's kind of a forerunner of their society but it's very interesting when you go into the actual story that you kind of forget about that a little bit and you're just reading through and seeing how she's adapting day to day and all the different people that she meets and there's also themes obviously of death and of grief and we also look a lot at hope and then hopelessness and then just looking at them side by side how you can go one day from very hopeful to the next day utterly hopeless and she also looks at listlessness as well which is a really interesting concept that kind of not having a purpose and having to try and find something day to day to strive for 
and we also um, look at gender roles in this and its sexuality so our main character the midwife for a lot of the book dresses as a man and uh, behaves as a man mainly to survive in this world because obviously as a woman she is a target for most of the men out there either to hurt her or capture her to trade her or obviously their intentions wouldn't necessarily be good if they saw a woman traveling alone so she does um kind of present herself as a man for a very large part of this book and it's very interesting the way in which that is handled and also there's a look at sexuality in this novel so i think our main character is bisexual at the start of the story she does have a partner who is a man she doesn't know what's happened to him and um, I'm not sure she ever does find out, but we as the reader find out what happens to him. And also um, she has kind of a brief relationship with a woman and I think on her part it's kind of more of a deeper relationship than the other woman. And when she also has a relationship with another man, I won't go into spoiler territory. Um, and then we also kind of have a look at sexuality with one of the other characters, um, one of the women that she meets who is pregnant and they spend a lot of time together and perhaps she is um, asexual, we don't know for sure but it's kind of hinted at through conversations um, between our main character and another character. So yeah, lots of different themes explored in here and also um, the theme of how religion would work in a post-apocalyptic setting. And I have to say that's probably one of the first times I've seen that represented in a kind of post-apocalyptic novel um, in any kind of large way. So we do meet a group who are kind of living um, more of a normal life in the sense that they're all kind of together, they're all working together, they're all um, kind of setting the table each night and eating together and they have domesticated animals that they're farming and um, they're farming obviously vegetables and wheat and kind of like a traditional kind of living setup uh, but I do think it also shows the downsides of how um, they're using their young boys to go out into the world and also how the men at the top um, in this part of their church are kind of um, taking control of the situation and manipulating it for their own personal benefits rather than for the good of the whole kind of community for the church. So yeah, lots of interesting things looked at in this book and I thought she did them really, really well and I'm very, very much looking forward to picking up the next two books in this series. I think this is probably on par for becoming one of my favourite post-apocalyptic novel like series of all time. Um, so yeah, I thought it was really, really good. Uh, so thank you so much for watching. Please do like the video if you've liked it and please do subscribe if you'd like to see more of me talking about books. If you have read this one, I would love to know your thoughts down in the comments below. All right then, bye.